help you receive. Young people out there, pastors going for voodoo power to create an environment to make money and to have the souls for the for Satan. You yourself, you are a product of Satan. You are making money temporarily to these precious souls. I don't blame you. If we were on fire and we were firing the way Jesus wants us to be, where would you stand? You'll be exposed like Ananias and Sapphira were exposed. You'll be exposed like Simon, the sorcerer, was exposed. It is not your fault. It is not their fault. Those of us who claim we have received the Holy Spirit baptism, we should look on our shoulders. Do we really receive this Spirit? The most important thing in the church today, the most important thing in the church today is that every member of the church be powerfully baptized in the Holy Spirit and to be at nice age sharper to work the works of God. You will hear me say this over and over again until you begin to do something. There are a few things I want to share with you this afternoon. I won't take so much of your time. It was Jesus' last message to the church. Jesus could have talked about many things. He could have talked about church growth, which he didn't mention. Some of us focus so much on church growth. And our churches grow. But the more we grow in physical number, the more we grow weaker, and weaker, and weaker in power. I would have preferred few church members who are on fire for Jesus. Hallelujah. All Paul found in the regions of Ephesus, ten, ten believers who were willing they love God. They have been baptized. They've given their life. They were born again. But had no experience of what we are talking now. They had no experience of this spirit of Pentecost until they came in contact with Paul. And when they received this thing, this thing we call it Holy Ghost baptism, when they received it, they were church people. What are we talking about? Why is the church in the condition in which it is? When you receive it, you will know. That's why I started by telling you. When the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, according to the word of angel Gabriel, we saw the evidence that she became pregnant and delivered the baby. When that angel spoke to Zachariah and said, your wife Elizabeth will conceive the barren woman will conceive. Those words came to pass. And she had John the Baptist. And what more? Our Lord Jesus himself. The promise of the Father. Do you think, Father, the Father will give us a weaker spirit? Do you think the Lord will give us something different than he gave Jesus? We are encountering the same problems Jesus encountered. We are fighting the same demonic host, the same Satan, the same host of the enemies. Why would Jesus be giving something different than this? Do we understand what Christianity is all about and what we receive? Do you understand? You may have a gun filled with bullets and somebody may be attacking you. A 
And if you don't know how to fire it, you'll still be holding it. And they will apprehend you. No wonder. Many of you are going to, to and fro. Looking for some people to pray for deliverance and all kinds of things for you. You know not what you have received. Hallelujah. Please bless you. He chose to talk about the necessity of being empowered by the Spirit. Jesus didn't talk about tithing. He didn't talk about relationships. Look at some of the things we talk about today. The things we talk about today. Hallelujah. Sit down there. Jesus could have talked about all kinds of things. Some of these things we have been seriously talking about in our churches, and our churches are weak, spiritually weak. You have soldiers who are so weak they can fire a gun when the enemy is coming. We have church members. That cannot stand their grounds. They always want your prayer. Pray for me. Pray for me. The least thing they will pick microphone, they will pick phone and call you the pastor. Weak congregation. They know about every other subject, but what I'm talking to you, the, the real stuff in the church. Spirit of Pentecost. I told you how Paul turned Ephesus around with ten men who became aware of this promise of the Father. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 19, verse 1 to 7. Paul's plan was to reach Ephesus and all of Asia Minor with the gospel. But he found that it would be difficult to do alone. So he got these 10 men. Oh. Oh. It saddens my heart. Because we have this, we have this mandate to reach as much as we, people as we can in this United Kingdom. And I had some few guys. Few guys. And I started telling them about this vision of God for us. This dream of God. This purpose. We took years to prepare for this. But just when it's about time for us to launch out, they were all gone. And now I stand on the street with completely new people. I've never thought. But God is never short of people. When the people I spent years equipping to do this vision of God, deny and they left just like John Mark left. God raised Timothy and Titus for him. And God has brought some Titus and Timothy for me to continue in today on this path. When the robber meets the road, this is where you see real believers who have the Holy Ghost in them. It's not by words, but by works. It's not by what we say, but action speaks louder than words. When the robber meets the road, would you be there? Are you there with your pastor? Are you there with your church? Standing out over there, reaching the unsaved. The very heartbeat of the Father. Are you there? Paul met two men, ten men, ten men, and some few women. He prayed for them, and this spirit came upon them, and they begin to speak in tongues. They begin to prophesy. They with these people, they took Ephesus. Who told you United Kingdom cannot be taken? I don't know what country you are living in. Who told you that country cannot be taken? By the gospel, the gospel.
gospel, ask yourself, the gospel that it takes to take this nation, is that what you are preaching to your congregation? Do we have the gospel that takes nations and the power that goes with it? We are deceiving ourselves in our churches. We are fooling ourselves. And our gospel is not touching even our neighbors. Yet we say we are doing ministry. You are doing ministry. You are doing your own work. Paul's first message to the Ephesians disciples was Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Did you receive? Did you receive? The spirit of Pentecost. Have you received the spirit of Pentecost? If indeed you have received this spirit, then check out what you have been doing. Because if this spirit comes upon you, it will work with you what Jesus said it will do. Remember what I told you of Mary. When the spirit that conceives came upon her, she conceived and bore Jesus. That spirit was purposely to bring forth Jesus into the world. God's words never fail. We knew, as of the apostles revealed to us, what Jesus does, what the Spirit of God does. And when the Spirit of God comes, He does what God says He will do. Hallelujah. They were going to participate in reaching Ephesus and Asia Minor. They needed to be empowered by the Spirit. And they were empowered because the evidence were all there that they reached Asia Minor. I told you about Mary before Pentecost. She also was among the people who waited in the upper room in Acts chapter 1, verse 13 to 24, Mary was there. She was also going to wait to receive this power to be witnesses for Jesus. She was specially chosen to bear Jesus, as I told you in Luke chapter 1, verse 28 and 35. But if after all this, she needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit for this assignment that is common to all Christians, this is a common assignment for every Christian. And we testify that we have received it. Why are we weak, we feeble, and timid? And we say that God has not given us the spirit of fear. We say that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. We have been saying this. We have been quoting this. So how come? Where is the evidence of power that we said we have received? Or you receive a language. You receive a language. You receive tongues. You went there to receive tongues so that you can speak in some language and prove that you are also spiritual. If indeed you have received this promise of the Father, the evidence should be all, all around. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 again. Acts 1 verse 4. Jerusalem, but to wait on the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. The promise of the Father. The promise of the Father to be witnesses for him. The promise of the Father to empower us. To empower you. To give you something from heaven. 
that makes the things of God possible. That is what you have been saying you have received. And if you have indeed received it, you will not be able to do something else. If we are doing something else, then we should question ourselves. What did we receive? Hallelujah. Jesus was empowered when he came out of the water on the day of his baptism. He began his ministry. He began his ministry in power of the Holy Spirit. The book of Luke chapter 4 verse 14, 16 and 19 said that Jesus returned from the wilderness with the power of the Holy Spirit. With the power of the Holy Spirit and he began his ministry. With the power of the Holy Ghost. With the power. The same power he promises. And he began if you are being empowered, you will begin something for God. And that something is about souls, about reaching the laws. Nobody will tell you better than I'm telling you. If you want your Christian life to count, this is it. This is the real stuff. I know what I'm telling you. Many of you are sitting on the edges. You don't want to jump in. You are sitting on the peripheral, watching from there. You are not part of the game yet. Even though you have been Christian so many years, and you are sitting down there speaking, watcha, 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 all these years. You are sitting on the edges. You haven't jumped in yet. You are not in the action. You are not in the action. And I don't know when you want to be part of the action. Jesus himself performed his ministry in the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, 38, please read for us. He did it in this way in order that he might be an example for all of us in ministry. He showed us practically when this spirit comes upon us, what he will do with us. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power and he went about say he went about he went about say he went about he didn't sit down he didn't watch from the fence he didn't sit at, the, at his home and watch on the social media he didn't sit down years upon years in the church but when Jesus was anointed with power and the Holy Ghost, he went about doing what Holy Ghost does. Doing what Holy Spirit does. Doing what that anointing does. Hallelujah. John 14, 26. John 14, 26. John 14, 26. Let's read on. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance all things that I said to you. The Holy Spirit teaches us all things and brings it to remembrance. This afternoon, he's reminding you this day, whenever you will listen to this sermon, Jesus is reminding you. He's bringing to your remembrance the purpose for which you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's not to be a spectator. Ghanaian president said, citizens, not spectators. Citizens of heaven, not spectators. 
God did not give you the Holy Spirit to become a citizen that spectates. You are not supposed to be a spectator. You are supposed to be part of the action. A participant in the work of God. What work are you doing? Christian's source of power for life and sense. The spirit of Pentecost, it is the Christian source, the Christian's source of power for life and service. It is the source of power of life and work for God. That's the origin of our life. And to work the works of God. You have been going to church all these years. And you don't know this. So you you still have got the Holy Spirit. I'm not sure you are the only one who knows. And you are just gallivanting in the church. Goofing around. Lazy. In the church. You don't care. All you want is to live for the physical, live for the natural, go to work and come, make some money, spend, waiting till you die and you go to heaven. What kind of life is this? Is that all we have reduced the Christian life to? Find some money, find some work to do, make some money, try to buy some land or some property, buy some, maybe a car, a building, whatever, and then keep on living and hope, hoping to die and go to heaven to do what? To do what over there? Our Lord's last comment Stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high being baptized in the Holy Spirit will affect every area of your Christian life. Every area. Every area. Your victory over temptations. Our victory over temptations. Romans 8, 4 to 8. It comes from enablement of this same spirit. Our prayer life, many of us we only have res we have restricted the Holy Spirit baptism only to prayer life. Only when we need something. All we have reduced the Holy Spirit to is prayer. And even prayer is not even to pray for souls to be saved. A prayer for us to squander on our physical needs. Jesus said you pray a means because you pray so that you will spend on your last. John chapter 4 verse 23 It empowers our way of worshipping God. I check the way you have been worshipping God. Check the way we have been worshipping God. Is it Holy Spirit empowered? When this spirit comes, it will affect our love for God and others. Our love for God first and for other people. You know, nowadays, some of the meanest people you can find, the meanest people you can find are in the church. Do you know there are some believers who have received Holy Spirit baptism and they pray in tongues? And there are Christian brothers, they don't see eyeball to eyeball. They don't even talk to them. Their shadows don't pass by each other. The meanest people you can find nowadays, you find them in the church. When this spirit comes, we are fed our relationship with one another. We are fed our understanding of the word of God. 
the way we understand the things of God. John chapter 14, verse 26. John 16, 13. Above all, you are fed how we witness for Christ. Read Acts chapter 4, verse 31 for me, please. You were fed our witness for Jesus. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. I'm telling you practical things that the spirit of Pentecost does with believers who have received him. And when they had prayed, the place where they assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Are you hearing? When they had prayed, they had another spirit. This experience didn't happen on the day of Pentecost. It was a different. The place was shaken. God shook the very environment. The place of their meeting was shaken. And the Spirit of God filled the place and filled them. The purpose was, the purpose was when they were praying, they were specific. They didn't pray, God, kill our enemies. God, give me financial breakthrough. God, give us financial breakthrough. God, give me a car. Let somebody give me a car. Let that businessman in the car, uh, in the church, bring his car to me and all those kind of things. None of those prayers. They pray, God, stretch forth your hands and let mighty peace be done in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. They only want power to evangelize, to witness. And it delighted God because that's the purpose. That's God's vision and dream. So instantly, God sent his spirit, filled their meeting place, shook the place, shook every one of them, filled them mightily after the day of Pentecost I'm talking about. And the word of God says, and they went about preaching with power they didn't say, yeah, we have received it. And go around showing off. We have received it. I've received it. No. They went and performed what the spirit of Pentecost performs. I wonder what so many Christians have received. You may be a Pentecostal. You may be in a Pentecost church that may boast that they are Pentecostal or charismatic and everything. If it is in you, it will be seen on the outside. If you have it, if you have it, it will be evidence. The evidence is all around. The atmosphere is changing now. The spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. If you receive it, the atmosphere will change. The evidence will be all around. And they went about preaching the 